Hello, hello, hello. It's uh, Craig Patterson here, also known as Patty, and uh, surf friends know me as the Pink Pig. Um, okay, we have another episode of uh, Jim and Made Easy. All right, so I'm not sure if this one's going to be easy or not, but uh, let's see if you can uh, follow along here. So my uh, my buddy uh, Sean Pastouche has been, you know, digging into the economics of gyms, and you know, he trains a lot of coaches. And uh, he's finding out, you know, they fuck, they got no chance. They can't make a living. He's coming back to me. He goes, Patty, what is this system like? What is going on here? What, you know? And I was like, dude, this is uh, this is the two brain method of coach compensation. And I go, it's nothing new. This is just rebranded, same old thing that's been going on in global gyms for thirty years, right? Is where uh, you know it's changed a little bit since the global gym days because it was about selling a membership. So you sold them a membership. If you're a global gym personal trainer or whatever. Or, you worked as a coach in the, you know, you had the equipment and you patted it down and you got paid by the hour to hang out around the place. And then uh, you got a percentage of whatever person you could upsell into personal training. So, you know, I don't remember those days. I remember them very clearly in the eighties and nineties, uh, you know, you have a guys roaming around that were in their twenties and uh, they were usually kind of jacked, but uh, you know, you could see all kinds of problems in their, their physiques. They usually weren't the, the best athletes, but uh, anyway, that's, that's just a judgment, but you know, they come up to you, started grinding you, helping you out with stuff and be like, dude, I'm broke. You know, I don't need a personal trainer. And then, you know, they'd find the, the 50 year old woman or whatever that was in there that needed the help and had the money. And, uh, you know, and that was it. And I tell you, nothing's changed since then. That really hasn't, not in the economic side. Anyway, uh, you fast forward to, um, you know, aerobics to step to, you know, uh, Zumba, uh, fucking you name it, um, yoga, Pilates, and fast forward to CrossFit world. Now that's uh, it's a group class instead of having the the globo gym. You know what I mean? It's uh, still there's a group, and uh, the owner makes the money off the membership. You know it, it, that really hasn't changed. The, the owner makes the money off the membership. He pays the coaches by the hour to train this class, and they get a percentage for anybody roaming around to do PTs. Uh, to be honest with you, it's absolutely absurd. Absurd. It's failed. Uh, it's failed for 30, 40 years. But uh, you know this is what people do, and uh, the coach has absolutely no chance become a professional, right? But here's the pros of it. The pros of it are you don't know anything, you can implement it easy. You can, if you don't know much uh, about uh, running a gym, I can open a gym, I can go hire a marketing company, we can get 100 people in here, I can pay a coach with a level one or find someone around that's been dragging around for a while um, and you don't even have to train them. You just say, hey, we're gonna run a, our classes this way. You can even hire someone to do your programming to tell you how to run the classes. You pay those coaches by the hour, and then you say, hey, anybody you can pull out of here, uh, we'll give you an upsell, a percentage, right? Simple. It's great for uh, part-time coaches. It's good for hobby gyms and experienced gyms. Like I said, the, the problem with the industry is anybody can anybody can get in. It's a low barrier to entry. And with the cross the world, it's, uh, it's been the ultimate spiral to the bottom is I can go buy that brand, open up, know nothing. And uh, I see them. And I actually see them on the Facebook forums, uh, some of my favorites. They're telling me all about how business worked a year and a half ago with gym launch and how they were going to get rich and they're projecting you know uh seven figure gym in the future <laughs> i'm like good fucking luck man that's going to churn everything and every coach is going to leave so anyway the pros the pros are anybody can set the thing up and get it running and have a gym and uh you know make money basically uh, you do this for a while you're going to just break even you, you you appear you're making money but you need to pay back your capital costs. You need to pay back the marketing. By the time you pay everything off, um, you know, you're probably doing a whole bunch of work as the gym owner. You're probably doing some coaching. You're definitely the gym. You're the marketing manager. You're the, you know, you're doing all these jobs and you're not getting paid for them. But you say, oh, there's, you know, there's 3,000 coming in a month or 5,000 or whatever. But by the time you do your books at the end of the year, you look at it, you're getting paid two or three bucks an hour. <laughs> and that's going on out there everywhere, everywhere, right? Anyway. Four, the four ninths, okay? So that's uh, that's the deal. You can set up and get into business and get it running and uh, really have no, you don't need to know sales. You don't need to know how to execute uh, properly. You don't need to know uh, communication enrollment. You don't need leadership training. You don't need fuck all. You just need bodies in the gym and you pay that guy an hour to go into classes and at four ninths or whatever. Four ninths is ridiculously low if you're just doing PTs. If you're a coach out there, you should be getting at least 60% for one-on-one uh, -on -one PTs is the other part of it. If you're on your own independent business and you're, uh, you're, you know, you're bringing in all your own clients, doing all your own thing, 
you probably should be getting seventy percent um, of that. Uh, but anyway, that's a, that's another side note. You know, we could go a million ways with the economics here, but uh, I'm pretty certain that I, I know them as good as anybody. Uh, so, okay, there is a shortcomings. The four ninth compensation model. It hasn't produced a professional coach in the history of like 30, 40 years. There are no professional coaches roaming around making $80,000 a year. They've been doing it for five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They just don't exist. This is why this thing doesn't work. But anyway, we'll show you. So we'll just do a quick economics. You know, providing you had the space and, you know, all the clients came to you and all the stuff. Um, you know, you did, you know, this is what it looks like. If you're going to work uh, 40 hours a week, it's probably the absolute max. You're going to burn out at 40 anyway, but you can probably do it for three to five years until you hate life and you want to kill yourself. But this is uh, this is the maximum you can pretty much make. 20 hours a week on the 20 hours a week, a group class, you know, that's uh, 4.3 weeks in a month is 87 group classes. And let's say it's $25 an hour. You'd be hard pressed uh, to even get $25 an hour uh, in a functional fitness gym anymore, but I'm going to be generous and say you get $25 an hour to run that class. Right. So, and then you have 87 personal training hours. So 20 per week, uh, 4.3 weeks in a month, that's 87 hours. And you're going to make four ninths of uh, $80 an hour. Now, most of the, the, especially the CrossFit gyms out there are not getting $80 an hour, but let's say we're going to be really generous. So you're getting 80 bucks an hour and you're going to get four ninths. <laughs> That's 35, 50 an hour. So you're working 40 hours a week. You're going to get, you're going to, your pay before taxes and whatnot. Uh, if you're an independent contractor, it's 5,263 bucks. Okay. Right. Take two weeks off. You get half of that, you know, take a month off. Uh, you know, you're probably done. You have no chance. Right. All right, so I mean, we could go into this really in depth, but you know, for our guys, we teach them sales, teach them marketing, we know this kind of stuff. We, you know, we teach them the, the technical parts as well. But our deal is, you just take care of fifty clients. You know what I mean? Uh, you're not, uh, you know, this. There's all kinds of things wrong with just paying people by the hour to run a class. But at the end of the day, we're paying them to take care of the clients. So there's a retention thing there, right? So anyway, the economics are 50 clients paying an average of 260 a month for the hybrid membership. They're seeing their coach once every six weeks. Um, a full uh, associate coach probably makes 45% of the revenue, the total revenue, group class and personal training combined. But the, just just running seven to eight classes a week, um, there are 50 clients. They're going to make 5,850 bucks right there. Um, you know, so 26 classes a month, six a week. Uh, 33 personal training sessions a month. And um, let's say the coach has two new clients and fundamentals. You know, when it all, when it all said and done, uh, I got this coach is working 21.5 hours in the week and he's making $7,686. He takes a month off. All he has to do is pay uh, accredited coaches in our system an hourly wage to cover his classes. We have part-time coaches that help out the full-time coaches. And he would probably still make $5,000 in that month, he or she, right? So there's a lot there, but essentially what we're doing here with the economics here is we're combining the group class, which is highly scalable, um, and the personal training together into one, and we're paying them in a completely different structure. Uh, and what that does is it eliminates churn, right? Our gyms, like the, the four ninth model gym is going to churn 70% a year. Uh, our gym is churn 20% a year. Massive difference. We retain 80% of our clients. They're going to retain about 30, right? So that's, that's where the big difference comes from. Uh, and the coaches are, manage those relationships. So, I mean, we have hundreds of uh, coaches, you know, making more than $5,000 a month uh, because it's sustainable, right? In this model, they're working, like I said, 26 classes per month. 33 personal training sessions for their hybrid membership. And then they're working, they got another six a week for new clients coming in through fundamentals, right? 21 and a half hours, their pay is 7,686, right? Versus the four ninths guy working 40 hours a week. So he's working almost double for 5,000 bucks. And if he takes a vacation, he's finished uh, and so forth, right? So that's the biggest part. That's the number one reason why this model the economics of it just don't work. You know what I mean? Um, but the thing is, the owner can set it up and he takes the, the reason why it works for the owner, sort of, doesn't work for him in the long run. It just works from the setup. 
he can set up, get 100 clients, and pay the coaches, and he can make money right away because he gets the vast majority of the group class money, right? The problem is it's going to fucking churn, and then the client, the coaches can't make enough money, and then they're going to leave, and you're constantly in this same situation as set up. And if you watch CrossFit over the last 15 years, it was like, I can get to 150 clients, and then I just can't get any more, right? Or I get to 200, and I can't get any more. Or some people, they get 300, and I can't get any more. And they don't make any money. By the time it's all said and done, they're three years in, five years in, they're burnt. It's because the model they set up works right away, works being, I don't lose money right away, right? But it's got no hope in the long run. Whereas the Mad Lab model, it's going to lose money right away unless you're the coach. If you're the owner doing the work as a coach and you build your tribe up to 30 or 40 or 50 people uh, and you don't have a massive gym with a whole bunch of rent, you can start making money right away. And then every coach you bring on is scalable. And when you get to four, two in the morning and two in the evening, you're going to make 20% EBITDA. Then you can hire a GM and you can step back from the business and it runs itself, right? It's, that's the idea. You're, you're actually building a sustainable asset, right? So, you know, I talked about the, the two, the biggest problems with this four ninth is client, the biggest problem is client retention, right? It, it, it just, it's going to churn clients, right? If you're and just imagine it, if you're getting paid 25 bucks an hour to go in a group, run that group class, and it doesn't matter to you whatsoever if the, the client leaves or not. You're in there, you give your one hour fucking ultimate, you know, Oscar winning, Emmy winning, Tony winning performance, right? Probably looks more like a Tony, actually. You're doing really, your Tony winning performance and then you leave. And you feel awesome about yourself. Meanwhile, little Susie just, you know, just lost her fucking boyfriend and she's sideways. She's got nobody to talk to it about it. Training suffering, her food suffering, her diet suffering, her life suffering, and she's not going to come to the gym. But if she had a coach who's getting paid for her to stick around, they're going to dig into all of that, right? And guess what? She's gonna go grab two of her friends after you take her after you help her life out. She's gonna go bring two of her friends in, and then uh, you know, guess what? You get two two new clients at 50-50, right? Uh, and the last part is the coach co-op. You know, the coaches are all working together. They're sharing the pool of clients with the group class. That's what scales it. If you have one coach by himself, it's really difficult to scale this unless you're gonna go with only seven or eight classes a week. And I did that. That's how I started my business. I had uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, one hour in the morning. Tuesday, Thursday, um, sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday in the evening, and then one class Saturday. So seven classes, I could handle 50 people, and they're all paying me $200 a month. And you know what? I didn't own the space. I, did, I had rented a personal training space, and they were cool with that, and I made good money on that. You know. So then when I moved into my first gym, so I've got that, and then my next coach that comes along, he adds an hour, he adds eight more hours, right? Now the clients have more choice of class. And so on and so forth right but the coach co-op and the group scaling the group class is what really makes it for a professional coach right the next part is uh, i don't see any pay scale like it's just like uh, you get this much an hour and then you're four ninths you know my, my coaches they start off at zero and they earn 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent over the course of three years and there's a whole coach development um process coming in you know what i mean like there's a whole you would take them through it. They earn more and more and more money and they get a bigger and higher percentage as they learn to get their own clients, as they learn to sell clients, as they learn to retain clients. And you know what I mean? All these things, but there's a mentor coach getting paid all along the way. Like if the, if the brand new apprentice coach is making zero, the mentor coach is making 50, right? When he moves up to 20, the mentor coach moves down to 30 and so on. You know what I mean? Until it's, uh, it's probably uh, 30, 20 the other way. And when they graduate the associate coach, uh, then the mentor coach gets 5% of their gross revenue for as long as they stay there. So there, this system perpetuates itself inside the gym. So the four nights model, there's no pay scale and there's no mentorship and there's no uh, coach development uh, really taking it along, uh, you know. Uh, and then the last thing is, you know, there, there's where's the incentive to bring anybody in? You know what I mean? It's just, I get four nights. Well, in the group class, if they bring someone in, they get an extra 10%. You know, so where did the client come from? Uh, you know, they train in the morning, in the evening, they do especially programs. There's different pay scales for everything. If I'm doing one-on-one -on -one PT in the middle of the day, that's a way higher pay scale. You know, that's an empty spot in the gym. A coach should make way more for doing PT in the middle of the day, right? Um, but the thing is, you don't want to turn into a full, the coach doesn't want to make this a full-time PT gig. He doesn't. 
right? It's kind of like a balanced portfolio, right? If he uh, all of a sudden turns into a pure PT guy, and well, all he can really handle is, you know, if he's working 40 hours a week, he can really only handle, he can't even handle 20 clients, you know what I mean? You know, and then you're caught in a dollar per hour, it's the group class plus the personal training scaled. You're maximizing average client value and, and reducing churn down to low, lower than 20%, then you can make eighty, hundred thousand dollars a year, right? That, that might might seem complicated, uh, but it's not. And uh, you know, we're on a podcast here. I could probably sit down and do a, a full on. Uh, this is how the coach makes a real wage in the Mad Lab model. I probably should do a PowerPoint. Actually, I'm going to write that down, right? How MLG coaches make pro age it's a good one i think we got some of that in our coach 101 we have some of that in our mad lab 101 it's probably already in there so if you want to learn more just go uh, go buy uh, our mad lab 101 or i think it's we're calling we're moving, changing the name to playbook for a uh, playbook for a great gym um anyway here, here's the end of the deal at the end of the end of the day here's the choices you have right you can go with it pay them by the pay them by the class pay them by the hour give them a salary whatever, you know, they're, they're all going to leave you with a serious problem down the road, right? Salary is probably the worst because they're going to just, <laughs> they're, uh, just human beings. They're going to work less and less and less. All the gyms we've seen giving out salary, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, how really ineffective and inefficient the, the coaches really are. But if you're paying them by the hour for a class, they're not incented to retain the clients and they're not incented to upsell them. They're not, you know, the upsell is the four ninths to do PT. So now they're a PT coach, you know. So, you know, in our model, we want to teach them how to sell a high value service. We want to teach them how to retain 80% of your clients. Um, and we pay them based on that. You know, I mean, what else would you pay them for? Like, what do you want in your gym? I want gym people to pay me a lot of money and stay around forever. Well, how do you incent your coaches? They pay you a lot of money and stay around forever. You know what I mean? Like the, it's ludicrous to me that this model still goes on in uh, in in the world uh, because you're paying them for a, a different for a different incentive than the result that you want. You know, in engineering, when I work for a Fortune company, Fortune companies, they had Fortune 100 companies. They had a whole division dedicated to 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 incenting the staff to get the results that they wanted. You know what I mean? key performance indicators. So, you know, we've got six key performance indicators. We incent the coaches to get those six key performance indicators. You know what I mean? And that's it. Um, anyway, if you like what you heard, you know, we got more and more and more of this stuff. Um, if you, you check out the um, playbook for a, a great gym, uh, or if you go on our website, um, even if you want to book a call with one of our people, uh, one of our, you won't be talking to a salesperson. You'll be talking to an implementation manager, someone that works with gyms on the ground. But uh, anyway, the pros and cons of the four ninth model. The pros is a marketing, uh, it's a great marketing name, but uh, the cons are it's the same old method that's been used in fitness and failed for 40 years. See ya. This is the Pink Pig. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.